Hello, hope this video finds you well. Um, this video is in response to a request about how do I set up a TK Inter um, program such that I can move between a couple of different screens. Now, in no way is this a definitive way to do it, but what this does do is it kind of helps set up your understanding of how to use TK Inter, how to access different parts of modules, um, and this idea about functions and binding. With that, let's dive in. So, what we're going to build essentially is oh, as soon as I hit enter here, is we're going to build this really simple. TK enter, it doesn't look good, but you'll see that this is label one and frame one, and I'm going to click this button one to two, and that takes me to label one and frame two. I click two to three, that takes me to label one and frame three, and I hit three to one. And notice there's another button here on the first one, I can jump right to that third one. And so what's happening here is I'm able to move between screens. So if you're building some really basic program and you wanted a couple screens, you can put those in there. Now, to help you understand the sequencing here, you'll see that, you know, this is my screen one. You know, my layout is I want to be able to go from screen one to screen two, screen one to screen three. Uh, screen two, I can go two to three. Screen three, I can go three to one. You know, this is just some arbitrary patterning I set up, but the idea of I've mapped out what sequence I want or which screens I can move between. All right, so let's dive in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build each of those screens. So to do that, I'm going to import TK into as TK. Um, again, I said this a couple times, I like importing TK enter as TK because it reinforces that idea of when I'm accessing functions from the TK enter module, I use TK dot. I'm going to build my root and I'm going to say root equals TK dot TK. So capital TK is the constructor inside the TK enter module that builds your window. That is your window with your, you know, your close, your minimize, your maximize. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build frames. Now, for this approach to work, what we do is we have our main group window that always stays open, and then we build frames and we put the frames in and take the frames out. So I'm going to build three frames. I'm going to make frame one equals TK dot frame, and that frame is going to go in the root window, and I'm going to set the background equal to red just so that we can see it. I'm going to make frame two TK dot frame. It's going to go in the root window. Background is um, blue, let's say. And I'm going to say frame three equals TK dot frame. And it's going to go in the root. Background is going to be green. Okay. So I have my main root window, which is, you know, the, the bar and the edge. And then, oops, pardon me. And then I have these three frames. Now, if I run this, nothing's actually going to appear yet because I have to do two things. I have to do my root dot main loop, which essentially sets up our loop that kind of waits for an event um, to our function. And I also have to choose one of these frames to pack. So I'm just going to say frame1.pack. So if I save this now and I run, I call this multi-window vid, and I run this, I get this really small window that you can't see right now. Let me pull up, but there it is. Now you'll notice, you know, it just, it's nothing right now because I've put nothing into this frame. And so the next thing that I want to do now is I want to build each of these frames. So what do I do to do that? Well, I'm going to make a label one frame one equals TK dot label. And I'm going to put that into frame one. And I'm going to say the text is equal to label one in frame one. OK, and then I'm going to say label one frame two equals. And I'm just going to take this, to be honest, and copy it and paste it. And I'm going to put this one in frame two. It's going to say label one in frame two. And then I'll just take that whole line and copy it again. And I'm going to say label one frame three. We're going to put this into frame three and we'll say label one in frame three. I'm just setting up a nice naming convention with my variables to help keep track of things. If this was a more complicated program, this would be quite useful because I'd be able to know which ones go where. All right. So now if I take a look at this on frame one, I want a button to go from one to two and I want a button to go to one to three. I'm going to need two buttons on that frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say btn1 to 3 equals tk.button, and that's going to go into frame 1, and the text is going to be 1 to 3, and I'm not going to add a function to it yet. So let's copy that, paste this. We'll follow our same convention, button 1 to 2, and we're going to put that in, in frame 1, and I'm going to say 1 to 2. And then if we come back up to this, we see that we have a 2 to 3 and a 3 to 1. So I'm going to put another button here, and I'm going to say button 2 to 3. We're going to put this one into frame 2, and this is going to be from frame 2 to frame 3. And then we have a 3 to 1. 
So we're going to go three, flame three to one, and this is going to be put into frame three, and it's going to say three to one. Now, of course, if I run this, none of these are in here because I've constructed all of those widgets, but I haven't actually put them into their frames yet. So now I have to pack everything. So I'm going to say label one, label one, frame one dot pack, and I'm not going to get into any type of fancy packing. I'm simply going to put this in. So then I'm going to say btn let's one to three dot pack, btn one to two dot pack. So now what I've done is I've I've packed everything in my first frame. So this is frame one. Now I'm going to take my second frame, frame two, and I'm going to say label, label, what do they say? Label one, frame two, dot pack. And in frame two, we're going to have button two to three, btn two to three, dot pack. And then in frame three, we're going to have button three to, well, first we need label, label one frame three dot pack and we're going to see btn three two one dot pack and now if I save this and give this a run my window starts off and I size there's my label one frame one there's my two buttons now notice I click on them and they don't do anything yet so I can't move between frames but let me make sure you understand this um, what I've done is I've built that root window which is this top bar here and I put that frame in there so I can come in here and I can really quickly change this to frame two and if I save this and run this, there's my frame two now. And just to kind of complete the loop here, let's pack in frame three. And I run this, there's my frame three. So the next thing I want to do is, I'll put that back to frame one, is I want to now actually bind functions to these buttons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to write my functions here. Now let's think of a nice kind of naming convention. So I'm going to make a def fnc um, one to two, and I'm just going to print um, one to two. And all I'm going to do is let's copy these, and we're going to paste them for each button. So notice here I have a total of one, two, three, four buttons. I'm going to need a total of four functions. So this is one to two. This is one to three. One to three. I heard someone once call this spaghetti coding, where you cut and paste stuff. Um, it's not always the best way to do the code if you're a beginning programmer, because typing in the stuff really reinforces. But I'm just trying to save some time in this video. Um, this is going to be two. I think it's two to three is my only one here. Two to three, yep. And so we're going to say here two to three. And finally, I'm going to say three to one. Okay, so I've saved those, and so I have a function here. Oh, three to one. And now what I have to do is I have to bind each of these functions to the buttons. Now this might come up at this point. You might say, well, can I make one function and check which button is clicked? Totally. That's a really nice way to do this. You could write one function and then check which button is actually clicked and bind that same function to all your buttons. That said, um, in this case, this is a nice starting way because it just simplifies things a little bit. All right, so how do we do that? So we're going to say command equals FNC. This is going to be 1 to 3. This is command equals FNC 1 to 2. Command equals FNC 2 to 3. Command equals FNC 3 to 1. And I'm hoping you're noticing by using a consistent naming convention, it makes it a lot easier. I can't stress this enough. Take the time and set up a good naming convention. It makes your code more readable um, and it helps both you and other people you might work with. Okay, so let's save this. Let's just see where we're at. So in theory, I haven't done any switching of frames, but if I click this, it should go into the function and print it. So let's look. 1 to 3, 1 to 2. Perfect. And let's assume the other ones work. So now this is where the main part of this idea comes from, of how do we, how do we swap those frames out? Now, what students will do sometimes when they're trying to figure out is they'll do this. They'll say frame one dot destroy. And what destroy does is destroy will actually destroy that frame and then it'll say frame two dot pack. And so if I save this and I run this, it comes up and when I click, um, which one, sorry, let me look. I was doing one to two, there we go. So when I click one to two, it works. 
Now, one of the problems with destroy is what destroy does is it just abs it destroys the frame. You have to rebuild it. So there's a better function to use here. So the instance function that works better here is pack forget. Pack forget. And what pack forget does is it actually will forget that packing. If you packed it on the frame, you take it out. So think of it like this. Imagine you have a, you know, your, your, your root window is almost like a piece of paper. And then each of the frames are a colored piece of paper that you can put on. But you can only put one at a time. Pack is putting that piece of paper on there. And pack forget takes it off. So when we start our program, we only pack frame one. But then when we click this button, one to two, what do we do? We pack forget frame one, because when we go in here, it's frame one's up, and we pack two. In this case, we're going to say frame one dot pack forget, but we want to go to frame three, so we're going to say frame three dot pack. And so now if I save this, and I give this a whirl, and I come down here and I click, there it is, it's popped back. Now that doesn't go back, so let's let's set this up. So I'm going to come down here. If I'm going two to three, I'm going to say frame two dot pack. Oops, no, frame two dot pack forget. And frame three dot pack. And then if I'm going three to one, that means frame three is in. So I'm going to say frame three dot pack. Frame one dot oh no, pack forget. Pardon me. That's it. So notice the first one is the one I forget, and the second one is I pack. So I forget one, pack two, forget one, pack three, forget two, pack three, forget three, pack one. And now we have this, this ability to go from one to two, one to three, two to three, three to one. And let's just wrap this up by showing how it works. So one to three, that works. Three to one, I go back. One to two, two to three, three to one. And of course, you can set this combination up however you want. So I hope that helps. Um, you can access all of these examples on the GitHub repository. You can find the comments. And please keep asking questions. I really enjoy popping these up here, and I learn as I go myself. So have a wonderful day, and don't forget to ask questions. Take care.